Toast to all the hardworking people out there. This one's for you. everyone, this is Yami, your Latina Next Door. Welcome back to my channel. If you've been following us on Instagram, you probably have seen the behind the scenes of us working really hard to get our kitchen completed. Tackling this kitchen has been a ton of work and we're not even finished. But I wanted to go ahead and share what we've done so far so that you get an idea of exactly how much work we have put into this space. Now this video is sponsored by New Air. We finally have an ice maker in our kitchen and I'll tell you more about that in just a sec. When we bought this house, we knew it was on a well water system. And when we started looking at ways to filter our water and make it as healthy as possible for our family, we found out that refrigeration filters, the ones that are already in place in our refrigerators, was not going to be enough as far as our standards. So we ended up going with a new filtration system. I've shared a video on that and I'm going to go ahead and link to it above and below. That way you guys can check out exactly the filter that we use to filter our water and a lot of the reasons why. Now, this also meant that we didn't have an ice maker the entire time we've been living in this house. So we were so excited when New Air contacted us to see if we wanted to try out this brand new 40 pound a day nugget ice maker. And it is so simple to do. All you do is add your water up to the fill line in the bottom of the container, insert the ice basket, open the little ice flap and close the lid. Turn it on. And in a few minutes, you'll start having ice. And if you're interested in checking out this ice maker, which can make up to 40 pounds of ice a day, we do have a link in the description box for you to check out, as well as a coupon code for a special discount. We use this machine for our everyday use. However, it's also great for get togethers, parties where you need more ice for your guests and you can scoop it right out as it's done or we like to actually put it in our refrigerator in a container so that it's ready for us whenever we need it and it's the good ice people but don't take it from me so when the latino engineers had a long day at his day job and a beer just won't cut it out of my beer refrigerator i come to this bad boy Y'all know what that ice is. That's that good ice. The one that you can crunch on, won't hurt your teeth. So did you guys guess right? Now we will be incorporating this ice maker into our kitchen. I actually have an idea of where I want it to go, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, we love our New Air Nugget Ice Maker. And if you are looking for something like this, definitely check it out. All right, let's get back to the kitchen renovations and let's talk about how disgustingly filthy these cabinets were. They had all sorts of stuff on them. They had stickers and tape and residue. We don't know what any of this stuff was. So because of the bad shape that the cabinets were in and the material they were made out of, we actually had to prep our kitchen cabinets a little bit different this time, unlike our previous kitchen. Now I do have a very detailed video on how to paint kitchen cabinets. I'll go ahead and link to that video up in the cards and in the description box below so you can check it out. However, I am gonna touch on a few things here or there in this video about how we prepped our kitchen cabinets because these were in pretty bad shape and so we had to take a few different measures to get them ready. Now these cabinets had a lot of moisture damage and again, a lot of that residue had to be sanded off. It wasn't just gonna be enough to clean them down. So as you can see here, I'm sanding it with a rotary sander. This was the best way to remove anything that had accumulated on them. And I also used this to remove all of the finish on the cabinet doors. And even though I was using a powered sander, this still took quite a bit of time. I wanted to be as thorough as possible, make sure I got everything off. And I did both sides of the cabinet doors. So if you do the math, we had 40 cabinet doors and I did both sides. So that's 80 sides I had to sand down. Also, it is very important to make sure you know which door is which at all times. So every time I worked on one side of the door, I made sure that the other side still had the number on it. 
The Latino engineer and I ended up creating a system. He would get all of the rust spots and all of the water damage edges off with his multi-tool. And then I would sand all of the surfaces, making sure I got rid of all of the top coats and smooth everything out. I also wanted to share that the drawers were also in pretty bad shape and I had to do the same exact thing. I would go in and sand them down with my rotary sander. And as you can see in just a second, they looked so much better afterwards. Luckily, I only had seven drawers for this, but even after everything was sanded, there was still even more work to do because everything needed to be cleaned. And I totally did this on my front porch. I know, real classy. Now for cleaning all of the cabinet doors, I used crud cutter in spray form. I wanted to make sure I got anything that was possibly left over from the sanding and anything that I might have missed. So I definitely recommend using that if you are going this route. I would spray them down, use a toothbrush to get into all those little nooks and crevices, wipe them down with disposable lint-free cloths to make sure I left them nice and smooth and clean. Also during this time, I made sure not to lose track of which door was which, making sure that I kept the blue painter's tape on the other side of the door as I was working on the opposite side. I dried them up as much as I could, and then I laid them out in the sun for a little bit so that they can dry completely before bringing them in. After they were dry, I brought them in and set them up in my basement, making sure that all of the inside of the cabinet doors were facing up because that is the side of the cabinet doors that I like to work on first. Now for my paint, I still use the exact same paint as I did in my previous kitchen. I use the oil-based Pro Block Primer as well as the Emerald Urethane Trim Enamel Paint from Sherwin-Williams. And to show you guys a little bit of my process, I start with a brush and I get all of the nooks and corners with it. I make sure to go over it several times to smooth anything out and get any excess paint off because I don't want any drips. And then after I'm happy with the application, I use a roller. As you can see, I remove a little bit of excess off in the center of the cabinet door. Then I roll all the sides, making sure everything is nice and smooth. And then I go back over the center of the door and smooth everything else out. This primer has amazing coverage, and this is why I use it. What I do is I do them all in the morning, let them dry throughout the entire day, and then I flip them over to the other side in the evening and do the same process on the other side and let them dry overnight before applying the paint the next day. The next day I flip them all over back to the inside of the cabinet doors and start with the paint on the inside. Now I do the exact same process that I do with my primer. I start with a brush and I do all of the edges, all of the corners and any nooks and crevices. And then I go back over with my roller and smooth everything out. I again do this in the morning and in the evening I come back and instead of flipping them over, I do a second coat on that same side. Let it dry overnight and then the following day turn them all over to the outside of the cabinet doors and do the same process. One application in the morning and one in the evening. After that process is done, I let them cure for an entire week before touching them again. So while that was curing, it was time to clean all of the old hinges that were on these doors. I decided to go ahead and reuse them all to save money because at two hinges a door, that's 80 hinges. It would have been just too much, honestly. And even though these were pretty nasty, all it needed was some good cleaning and some new paint. So I bought one of these like roasting pans that you can get at Walmart. I added a lot of boiling hot water to it. And then I also added some degreaser. I got this one from Dollar Tree. It was just a dollar. And I let them sit overnight. The following day I came in with Dawn dish soap and I scrubbed the crap out of these. <laughs> I was able to get everything off luckily, but it just took 
a couple of hours actually because there was just so many of them and some of them were in really rough shape. After they were all nice and washed and rinsed, I laid them out in the sun to dry. After they were dry, I used a Dollar Tree foam board in order to add all of the screws that came with them. That way they stood upright and I laid them all out outside and I used a clean metal primer to go ahead and prime them at first and I gave it all a nice coat on both sides. You don't need to go too heavy on this. As a matter of fact, I found that the lighter coat that you give them, the better the paint sticks. After those were dry, I came in with some oil rub bronze spray paint and I ended up using this entire can for both sides of the hinges and the little screw heads. I gave these a couple of days to cure, that way the paint would harden before adding them back onto the cabinet. At this point, we added the cabinet pulls as well. Because we saved money on reusing the hinges, I was able to purchase new handles for all of the cabinets, which I'm so grateful for because I really do love these. I did use cabinet pulls with the same measurements as the ones that were already on there, so we can go ahead and use the original holes. However, even that comes with issues. It looks crooked, right? It's because it is! So we, uh, we use the existing holes, so uh, when this thing goes up um, and it looks crooked, it was nuts. <laughs> Look at it. Yeah, there's always going to be something with home renovations. I was so happy when I was finally able to get these doors back up in the kitchen. Also, I wanted to mention that in order to protect my paint finish on all of my doors, I used these small round felt pieces on all of the corners of the cabinet doors as well as the drawers. In the next video, I'll be going over the countertops and all of the issues we encountered during that. So make sure you stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this update on our kitchen and as you can see, there is still so much left to do in this space. Now all of the links to all the products and items mentioned in this video are in the description box below, including the link for the New Air Nugget Ice Maker, which we love so much and are so happy to be making our own ice now. Hit like if you enjoyed this update, make sure to subscribe if you want to continue following us along on our home renovations. I'm going to go ahead and link to the playlist of our Fixer Upper series. That way you can catch up on any videos that you haven't seen yet and see everything that we have done to this house so far. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Until then, adios.